sitting here with my dear friend uh, Aaron Peters. We uh, did a first talk in Dutch um, and now a second talk in English to talk about a lot of things, but I guess it will be uh, mostly about our uh, shared passion, radio. Yes, radio. Can you tell us something about your background? Uh, when did you uh, call, uh, w when did the radio virus get into your system? Uh, I think it was there all along. Uh, when I was a child, I loved to listen to the radio, but in a different way than the most DJs I know. Uh, they had a lot of examples and they wanted to be them. I was just intrigued by uh, the, 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 the subjects, the, 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 the feel of uh, certain shows. And uh, when I was like eight or nine, I think every DJ shares, uh, shared this, uh, this history is that I had a, a tape deck, a tape recorder, cassette recorder, and I made my own radio shows when I was eight, nine. And uh, listened to the radio at nine on Friday night. You had Radio Veronica's uh, uh, mini mix, Ben Liebrand as the master mixer, and uh, great, great shows. Uh, but there were a lot of different shows. Everything that intrigued me or I had a certain feel to it that I, I listened to. Not as, as a... As a uh, as a particular uh, host, as a, an on-air talent, but just what got to me, what I found intriguing, or I learned something from it, and it could be anything. And when was the first time you went uh, officially on air? How? What was your age then? Um, um, I was. That was the summer of 1990, July 1990, and I was. I was a bit older than most DJs I know. Uh, they started earlier. It was a local radio station, Keizerstad, in the, the vicinity of Nijmegen. It was an old pirate station. Well that, known. Well known. Yeah. And they just got legit. And it was 1990. I was 21. Yes, okay. I was 21. Yeah. And what did you start doing? A daily show or just a weekly show? Or? Uh, no, it was, actually, it was at night. It was at night in the weekend, I believe. Uh, it was fantastic. I can remember it as a day uh, like yeah. it was yesterday. Yeah, yeah. You chose your own music. Uh, yes, I did. Yeah, that was uh, with with just vinyl. We had a, the, 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 uh, we had a whole library, and then before your show starts, you you picked your own music. That was great. Yeah, that was great. Yeah. Was it a, a certain kind of format? Was it only dance music or pop rock? There wasn't really a format. There was a um, you were supposed to pick your own music, and the people who work there. It's funny that you you, you say that because uh, I can't remember that I got directions about okay, this is our radio station. We played this and we played that. We, I think, everyone that worked there. They chose their music, um, their repertoire, just from their gut, yeah. and, and so did I. But we had the same. There was something that really uh, united us. That you know, the people who worked there, they belonged there, and so there was this common sense, uh, feel, of what was uh, supposed to be on air. Yeah. But there were no restrictions whatsoever. No restrictions. Just everything was up to uh, the on-air talent, to the DJ, just pick your music. When did you start earning money with, with your passion? Uh, that was 1992, I believe. I did um, uh, a lunch show between 12 and 2, mm -hmm. called Sandwich. And sandwich. I did the Sandwich, yeah. <laughs> and I did that for quite a bit. And then all of a sudden, that local radio stations, they weren't allowed to, uh, to have commercials. But later on, and I, that was in 1992, it was allowed, and then I stopped to earn my my first salary. Yeah, I believe it was 700 guilders a month. Yeah, and I didn't care about money. I, no. If <laughs> if they told me that I had to bring money, I did. I would have done that too. Yeah, but it was the first money uh, that I got. Yeah. yeah. Uh, were you already playing uh, music in in clubs then? I did that before I, yeah, I was on the radio. Oh, okay. I did that in, in, in child in, in elementary school when I was like 10. There was this uh, 
opportunity after some seven I don't know that was with the, about uh, there was a play and we all went there and after that there was this DJ booth and there was this all and they asked if someone would like to to play the music and I was yeah me pick me pick me so yeah, yeah. that 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 the spark the, something sparked in you exactly and yeah. I did that in Arnhem there was this club I I played in a bar I started and then in a discotheque uh, that was in Arnhem also and so that was already in my life. Well, what is for you the big difference between playing music in clubs and radio? The first thing that comes to mind for me is uh, on radio you don't see your audience, you don't get that immediate feedback. Uh, w w what are more differences about playing for a crowd and making radio? Uh, in uh, Essentially, basically there is not much difference because the origin of what you do is who you are if 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 i am still playing clubs a lot and if i um would try to do it out of my head as 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 in as in as in, in a formula yeah. kind of way then i wouldn't know what to play I, you know there were a lot of gigs i did for the money or uh, where i didn't feel the passion and then I had to choose the songs from my uh, 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 from my from my past experience. Yeah. Then it would be just a rational thing to do, and then it wouldn't come across. Uh, and same as with radio, with uh, is if it's not really you, then it's 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 not really engaging. And so if I play in a club or on the radio. You know, on the radio, you don't choose your own music, but the, your whole personality, that's the, you can't hide be, be behind um, the music. If you play in a club, you can behind, uh, hide yeah. behind the music. But on the radio, you have to show your personality. Otherwise, you get, you know, the train conductor that, you know, calls the stations. Uh, so it's easier to hide behind the music when you play in a club. Yeah. M maybe it's uh, interesting first to say that you're uh, now not DJing uh, more at radio, but in clubs, and you are a radio coach. You coach new talent. Uh, or old talent. It all doesn't talent. matter, it doesn't matter. It's funny because I uh, regularly talk to all the colleagues of mine from radio station that you, you and I both worked at, and they'll say, oh, well, uh, I'm not really a customer, I'm too old, blah, blah, blah. And when you talk with them, uh, they talk about, okay, I have to, uh, I have to do I have to do it right because of uh, the um, the rates, listeners rates and uh, I have to be careful not to say this or that blah 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 and then I talk to them about but how does it make you feel if you have that in the back of your mind when you're doing a radio show that you have to take into account what management says or you know what what, what the listeners rates or you know there's a lot of fear and it, it makes it more like a tunnel vision. You don't get more creative when you think that way. When you are in that state of mind, everything becomes very uh, uh, contrived. It, it becomes very, well, not, not more creative. Yeah. And when I talk to him that, what's your effect on a listener's rate? Well, it's, 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 you are just a fraction. You don't control marketing. You don't control the, your own music. You don't, you don't have a say in what your competition does. So in, in a matter of fact, you don't have uh, any, any control. The only control you have is what you do. Yeah. And they say, oh yeah, right. Yeah, that's a good point. And, it's, and then I ask them, well, how would that feel with that in the back of your mind? Would that, would, would, wouldn't that give a lot more room, a lot more space to do your own creative thing? Yeah, that, yeah, and those are the people who say you, I don't, you don't have a client in me because I'm too old. Yeah, but that, in, in, uh, yeah, and, and that fact is, it, it's a, it's a coaching ses session, without them knowing that it it's a, yeah. yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. People, uh, new talent, old talent, everyone could use kind of mirror or you know putting things into perspective. Uh, perspective, if it's me, a coach, or just a good friend. And isn't that the task of the program manager to tell you that you don't have to worry about ratings, you don't have to worry about marketing, just do your own thing? 
in an ideal world it would be. <laughs> yeah. But nowadays, like program managers are more uh, corporate like, and uh, although they may be, uh, be in love with radio, but there, it's a different skill to uh, bring out the best in people, you know, to really understand how uh, a creative process works. For a lot of people that is not in their system, and they're more corporate, they're thinking about GRPs, they are thinking about, you know, uh, and in the end of the line, how much uh, listeners do, uh, you know, are listening and how marketing works and they're not really involved in uh, uh, talent management. Uh, what do I have to do? What, what can I do to uh, give my employees, the all my talents, every space and every, uh, uh, and, uh, every chance to develop their creativity and be as effective as they can be on radio? You yeah. know? Because they're, they, they are, um, their approach is different. Not everyone sees it, it's not a bad thing, but a good program manager would realize that he doesn't have the skills or he has to bring uh, external uh, expertise mm -hmm. to, uh, to um, really um, uh, get that process going and really bring something to the people who work there uh, to uh, excite them and to give them space to motivate them yeah. and not try to control everything the the first thing that happens when you try to control creative people creative process is that you know uh, it's finished you're done because my experience is that most uh, on air talents most DJs are well insecure you know, because it's really personal what you do on the radio. If someone criticizes you and it's your boss, then the, 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 then a few things happen. You think, oh my God, my job is on the line. I have to be careful what I say because I don't want to lose my job. Yeah. It's just, you know, I need the money, I need the gig. Yeah. Uh, and it's, uh, it, it's, it's a rejection of, it feels like a personal rejection. And that's what happens to people who are insecure. They feel it as a personal rejection. Yeah. And that's, that's, that, that you have to be careful for uh, because people won't take any risk. They no. won't expand. They won't try. You have to really encourage uh, people to, to make mistakes, to make mistakes, yeah. to make mistakes, yeah. to bring out their personality, yeah. their, their own skills, who they are as a person. That's the only factor that really makes people want to listen yeah Som sometimes for us djs uh, we think that radio a radio show is like a, a exam at school where we have to score an a or a 10 uh, as we say here in dutch but we also know that the best radio shows uh, when you're going to examine them you sometimes make mistakes you said wrong things but it has it had a great vibe it had the, the, the right atmosphere so it's yeah. not about perfection in radio. It's not about, and you know what? I think we, are as uh, it's not only about us as DJs, but everyone who really puts their heart in what they are doing, they already set their uh, their uh, the benchmark somewhere here. We don't need anyone to tell us that we have to do our best, that we have to uh, to go for an A every time. We know that because we're passionate about what we're doing. Yeah. We are never satisfied. I've never had a radio show and I thought, okay, well, this was it. This this was <laughs> yeah. my best. It's never good wow. enough. So we don't need, if you have an on-air talent, uh, which you have to tell every time you, knew, you, 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 uh, you need to do your best. If someone's not performing, then that someone is not in the right place. Then you, that's the indication that, you know, you have to make sure that or that person is not in the right place, right station, or it's not just uh, the right job for that person. Yeah. You have to be honest about that. You don't have to motivate DJs. If you are passionate, and it doesn't matter it which field, you. exactly, you, you're same with nurses, doctors, yeah. uh, uh, you know, waiters, waiters, you know, it's not something you yeah. learn, it's something that you have in you, and yeah. you're really, and when you're passionate, you don't need 
people to tell you need to, to be uh, to be better at your job yeah. or take more motivated. Exactly. Yeah. Um, uh, for the right um, way, um, we have to say that after all those local stations, you've 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 been a, a, a national DJ yeah? on the radio Veronica Veronica FM. You're in FM. Just for the picture, yeah, for like sixteen years, yeah. Yeah, for yeah, people who, right. who don't know you, they think, well, what, what's this guy talking about? He was only on local radio. No, you've been on national radio too. And what's interesting about you, uh, we have uh, uh, the same passion for uh, radio teachers from America. Uh, you you listen to a lot of Dan O'Day, Randy, yeah. Randy Michaels. You just uh, yeah. let me hear a uh, yeah. little uh, thing. W what's the thing? Let's start with Dan O'Day. What's the thing you learned from him most? Um, I learned from everyone. Uh, Dan O'Day has uh, always been uh, someone who, because it wasn't uh, it wasn't available in, in in Holland. There's not no one like Dan O'Day, yeah. uh, and uh, because it was very uh, clear and it was very uh, um, uh, he was very clear in what he wanted to say and he, and 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 very um, um, practical. And you could use it right away. Yeah. And I, uh, uh, and Randy Michaels, I, I just uh, yeah. let you listen to a piece. And, and can you believe it? It's from the nineties. That piece on uh, yeah. about programming, about that radio programming. It's yeah. not. It's not paint by numbers. It, it's no formula. And it's an art. It's an art, and you have to have people, especially program managers, CEOs, who are really uh, confident uh, about themselves and give people the space and not try to control anything. It's not pain by numbers. It's not music research and this is the good song. It's not, it's, it's not, you're not a bookkeeper as a music director. You have to put your heart and soul in it and you have to uh, give people every opportunity to shine and to develop themselves yeah. to, uh, and not try to interfere, not to try to control or directly di direct people to a certain point because you know it's it's uh, deadly for creativity to to have to want to have more control yeah it's the depth it's absolutely devastating to creative people to creative minds yeah people get scared you just talked about the other day in past mm -hmm. tense uh, uh, that's a comment I hear uh, sometimes from even program managers of national radio stations. Um, I say, well, then or they uh, once said this about it. They say, well, then or they, that was then. It's now 2017. But you and I, I can imagine, think those things from the 90s and the zeros, they still apply to yeah, now. Exactly. Uh, funny that you say that because there is the, the last plus years, a uh, few years, I didn't really. Uh, uh, followed yeah. Dan O'Day, I'm still subscribed to his email, but um, uh, funny that you, you brought that up because the last two, three weeks I'm uh, on YouTube, there are some some clips from him and uh, I started listening again. And if you listen closely, that everything he says is what I believe is true. It's the essence, He's, he, he talks about people he, he, he's talking about passion. Everything he says is about what uh, the starting point must be. And that is that you are aware what you are doing and that you bring in that the most important thing for radio is the human factor of authenticity. It's the most important thing. That's the thing that, uh, that binds us as, as, as people. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, music is just music and a DJ is someone who, who changes her voice. Yeah. You know, he, he uh, funny that he used it, it as an example that, you know, we're talking like this, but why should I, oh, wait a minute, I have to be on air now and I'm talking like this, you know, and, and, and <laughs> it's so funny because it's true. It's uh, you put now, on a voice. You put on a voice and the act, you know, yeah. as, as in, oh, now I have to be the DJ and uh, now I have to talk, uh, say something <laughs> funny. And, uh, you know, it, it doesn't work that way. What is the thing that, that, you know, that really gets to us? What really makes us feel something that is authenticity? If I am sincere and I tell you something, it doesn't matter how long you talk on the radio, but if it's real 
And if it's authentic and if you have a point of what you're saying and it's coming from you within, yep. then nobody gives a damn how long you talk. It doesn't make sense to say, oh, 20 seconds, that's the max. And mm -hmm. no, it's not about that. It's about what you say and how you say it and if you mean it. And you can't make mistakes. If I would make a lot of mistakes in, in a talk, in, in, in what I would say, people don't hear the mistake. People forgive you because what you say is real. They don't hear the mistakes. They don't hear that you uh, mispronounce some things yeah. or that you, they are uh, interested in what you say and how you say it because it's real. You can't make mistakes. You no. can't, you, you know, you can't, it's, it's possible you can talk like half an hour. As long as it's sincere, it's real, yeah. then people don't, uh, you know, uh, have an idea how long you talk. But if you talk about something and you read it from the paper <laughs> or, or you, you copy paste something and it is, isn't interesting, it isn't you and it's you, it, it isn't it's your perspective, it's boring. Yeah. And people, would, people wouldn't immediately say maybe it's uh, or the, the, what he's saying is not interesting. But, Oh, he has an annoying voice, yeah. or or they play uh, play music, or, yeah. or they're too uh, they talk too much. Yeah, yeah. yeah, people say they talk too much because it's not, it's not interesting. Yeah. That's it. That Dan O'Day gives a lot of examples from that. Uh, I learned so much from him. He says when you call a friend and you read something interesting in the paper. You're gonna tell that friend what you l l read in the paper. Exactly. You're not gonna read the whole article to him. He's gonna hang it's out. It's your own personal yeah. perspective of that. Yeah. You know, it's Maybe it's your own, own angle. Yeah. It's it's a what what yeah. what a, uh, it's something that did something to you yeah. uh, and what you uh, perceived from it. Yeah. And What's your point of view on it? Make it exactly your what your angle. What what yeah. does? Why did it trigger you? Yeah. You know what ele element, and then yeah. you you start immediately become uh, passionate about yeah. it, and from that passion, people have uh, this 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 um, internal I call it the bullshit meter. You know, if you hear someone uh, talk about something, you immediately intuitive you know bullshit or not. You know, <laughs> and you start to to to, to zone out. You don't yeah. you don't you know. Mm -hmm. He talks yeah. about something that he doesn't know a shit about. Or something yeah. like that, yeah. And he sounds like it, you know. Yeah. The, uh, did you hear that about this guy? That's, you know, it, it's about your own perspective. Yeah. It, it, it was, so, what, what, why does it, does it trigger you? Yeah. About Dan O'Day, I think he was misperceived a lot of times because um, people thought, and I did that too, it, 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 okay, Dan O'Day has, uh, uh, says about writing radio comedy as uh, 0.1, 2, 3, it has da, 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 yeah. this. And what I was, uh, what I did and what I thought was, oh, if I apply that system, then uh, I will be successful. That's how it works. Now, it, it, it's the essence. It's, it's your essence and then Take those concepts yeah. and make them then your own, and and uh, you know. But, but first, you have to be in total comfort with who you are. You know, a lot of DJs think, okay, well, a DJ it has to be funny, has to have a good voice, has to be interesting, blah blah. blah. And then you get all those elements, yeah. and then apply uh, things. You know, and then you're gonna apply earth to be funny. Well, if you're not really that funny, don't do it. Yeah, but people don't know their own talents, their own skills, yeah. because everything you do, uh, uh, if you do something that comes natural, you not tend to think, oh, that's special, because if you do something natural, it doesn't have any value because I don't have to do anything for it, yeah. so it can't be special. Yeah. It can't. It, it cannot be something that would um, would set me apart from other DJs. It has no value. Yeah. If I can do it like this and I don't have to do any, put in any effort, then everyone can do it. Yeah. And what I see is that I, when I coach uh, DJs uh, is that they're not aware of their own skills. But what happens if they hear it, if they believe it, if they become aware of that's me, that's who defines me as a person. Well, there is no DJ and a person. Yeah. There's only the person. 
so it, 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 it's not, you know, I want to become a DJ, what I have to do. It's who am I as a person? Yeah. You, you bring the personality to uh, your, your work or, you know, the, the, the studio. There is no separation between those yeah. two. And the thing that makes radio, makes people, the people who are to be considered as most inspiring uh, and, and, and uh, most interesting are the people who are themselves. Yeah, that's what Dan and I talked about in one of the seminars. You can uh, easily take someone from um, the corridors, or how do you call it, uh, someone who works internally at the radio station who is interesting to learn radio skills than someone from radio to be interesting. Exactly, I couldn't, yeah, yeah. That, that's that's a great quote because yeah. it's, yeah, I, I totally agree, yeah. I totally agree. There's a radio station in, the, in Holland, it's called Phonics, and what they do, I think it's brilliant and logical, is that they um, they search for their new on air talents for the new DJs. They uh, look for DJs in their in, in their audience, in their listeners, and uh, I think it's brilliant because you have people who are passionate about what they hear. They feel connected to the radio station because it's 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 a radio station that has a lot of passion and vision. And they they do it not because they make the money, but because they believe in it. Yeah. So the listeners they feel attracted to that, and they have those uh, selection days, and they get wonderful DJs who don't know anything about radio, radio skills, or teasing, or GRPs, or but you can teach them not too much. Be them that you have yeah. to keep their authenticity. But you can teach certain things and be, make them aware how it works, you know, and yeah. but then still keep their uh, authenticity and still keep them interesting. It's yeah. brilliant. You get wonderful things. That's that's. But what you say, yeah, it's it's true. You yeah. Know? One more thing about Dan, and uh, then we talk about other stuff. Otherwise, it will look like a commercial for him. But you know, I learned so much from him. One thing he, he once said was, uh, when I listen to you on the radio for one hour. And I didn't get to know you a little bit better. Then was a wasted hour. I yep. want people want to get to know each other better. They want to learn from you. They want they're interested in you. But that can easily become something that can be misunderstood because then you think, oh, I have to talk about myself all the time. But that's not what he means. No, that's not no. And it's exactly it's it's uh, funny that you say that because that's. The essence of what he says and 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 what I didn't get I didn't get it a couple I didn't get it I thought it was like paying by numbers I yeah. think I wasn't that in, in, in that um, I have to perception apply yeah I, found I have to apply it yeah as in uh, you know as a as a, as a, as a uh, kind of uh, yeah paying by numbers uh, it's it's uh, one to ten and you have to apply it and it's not that it's uh, it's funny and i i was uh, listening to him and i was reading some things and I, how could i miss that because all he says is uh, be yourself and that he didn't say anything else yeah. and, and funny, make, it, make it your own it is yeah. exactly but that's that's the yeah. essence that people miss because i all i know a couple of program directors who absolutely love dan o'day but still don't get it. They think, oh, okay, this and this and this and this, and then totally forget to to uh, to make it th th their own. Yeah, it's so funny. You have to apply it, but from your own perspective. Yeah, it's not a format. It's not paid by numbers. That's it's but it's art. Yeah, it's art. That, that's how people uh, tend to live. Eh? Tell me how to tell me how to do something, and I will do it exactly as you tell me how to do it. But then we don't get forward in radio because you know all those artists who had a a, te a teacher as a, pa a painter as a teacher, they started to do it on yeah they get skills, but they started to do it on yeah. their own way, and then something new came out of it. And, but I think that's uh, not only with video, but the example you use. I always, uh, I also see that in uh, people who are. I don't know if it's true, and I don't want to offend anyone. But people who are extreme religious, you have to be self confident to uh, to determine your own future, your path, and your, uh, your your own morals. But if you are really really insecure and I'm aware that's not 
it's not a, a, about everyone. Mm -hmm. it's, I'm not saying that every religious person is, uh, you know, into religion because of this. But I think in the more extreme forms where there is a lot of space for you as a person, uh, it's convenient and, and, and it's nice to have something you can grab and where you can read how to live because you don't have to think for yourself, think for yourself yeah. and you don't have to question yourself. You don't have your you don't have to make your own moral judgments. There is something you can live by. Yeah. as a set of rules and more extreme you, you don't have to you know you don't have to worry about making mistakes because you have this set of rules you can follow and that's the good path yeah. i think it works like that have you read anything about valerie uh, from valerie geller the book she the big book she made oh that's a long long time ago yeah that that's a woman coach we have to mention because there are not only men who coach uh, radio talent some uh, for DJs who are watching this, what is the biggest mistake uh, radio jocks around the world make? You think? Um, they, th um, I think it is that um, they have a certain picture of what a DJ on air talent should sound like, look like, and what the skills should be, and uh, fill every intro tell what time it is exactly and uh, uh, how to uh, don't use I use you and that's that's also uh, something eh? you never you talk uh, about you. you you never say I well do you say I in conversations with friends and and, and family? it's not a problem to say you know I have great tickets for you here I mean uh, it's not, that's not an ego thing. It's not, the people think in, 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 uh, in rules of uh, not I, you have to, it's not something that is written in stone. It's mm. about you as a person. And in a normal conversation, I probably said during this conversation, a couple of times I about, about me, but yeah. it's not, that's not a bad thing. That's mm. what we do. As long as you uh, are uh, uh, try to connect to the other, and that in this uh, talk uh, it, it, that comes natural because I'm interested in you, as, yeah. and you are sitting as the guy who does the interview, but uh, uh, um, we are interested in each other, and then things start to flow. If you really before uh, you go on air, they oh. I must avoid I. I must. Uh, uh, that is going to be so contrived and forced yeah. Yeah. that immediately you are, you know, talking out of your head and not from the heart. Yeah, and exactly that. That uh, what happens is there is this disturbance in, 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 in the connection. You know, it prohibits you to make a connection authentically because you're thinking, okay, what's the right thing to say? What's the wrong thing to say? If you do that. You know, with your partner or anything, you have to avoid the avoid, word I. Then you get something that's so, you know, people would look at you as a, you're crazy and uh, are you my psychologist or, you know, it's not authentic anymore. So the connection, it, it's, it's harder to, to establish a connection if you yeah. really start to think there is uh, a good way of saying this and a bad way and I have to think constantly about the right way. No, be yourself. Yeah. People forgive you instantly. People forgive you because there's nothing to forgive. If you are a, na a natural, uh, if you try to be natural, be yourself, people hear that. They yeah. won't, you know, they won't be offended if you say the word I, you know, they, or you talk too long. You know, it's not, a, it's not in your head. It, it is really uh, from the heart. Yeah, that's an interesting thing. Um, we DJs have to play music. We don't pick our own music uh, anymore when we're on radio. It's all formatted. And we're, you also say it, we have to be ourselves on the radio. But let's say that I've been playing the same songs for over 15 years at the same station and I cannot be enthusiastic anymore from the heart about the music I'm playing then you have to fake it, eh? fake it till you make it. You have to say, well, here's the best song ever by John Lennon. But inside you think, God damn,
I am John Lennon. I, if the guy wasn't killed already, <laughs> <laughs> I would go out and kill him for this song. What, what's the thing to do? Leave the station? Is there any tips for, for jocks who struggle with this? That the music they're playing, they, they cannot be enthusiastic anymore about it. Yeah, I find that an interesting question. I, um, I, uh, it's a question I uh, ask myself, not, not out of the interest, um, because uh, uh, from the point of view of an on-air talent DJ, but more as a, a broader perspective. If, uh, uh, could it work if DJs were allowed to pick their own music? Would it work? Could it work? nowadays in, 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 in this market, especially in the Netherlands, we have such a high density of radio station, but that's really unique in the world. And um, could it work? I think it could work. And I, uh, a couple of years ago, I, I discussed this with uh, the, the, the program manager at our radio station. Mm -hmm. And if you have, you know, if you set the marks, if, and, uh, in the, um, if you set the boundaries, I think it's possible to give people that responsibility because what you say to your on-air talents is when you have, uh, have all the music scheduled, you don't have any say in it. Um, um, you say to the on-air talents, okay, you're not capable of, you know, picking up the music or, you know, you're not, trustworthy enough or you, you don't have yeah. you don't know anything about music you're gonna play totally off format exactly yeah. and i think that's not true i think also that the way music is being scheduled and as in music research and uh, uh you know schedule only the songs that 10 out of 10 people find fantastic there's a lot of ways where you can vary that you know you can you can schedule the music that uh, with songs who, uh, well, m maybe not 10 out of 10 people, but eight out of 10 people like it. And you know, you can schedule it in a way that it gives far more, um, uh, um, uh, where it sounds more, uh, more vari for, uh, for variety, yeah. uh, where it sounds more interesting. And people will listen, will, will, will stay tuned if that music is scheduled, not from a perspective as a bookkeeper. Oh, I need a song from uh, three minutes and 30 seconds and it has to be recurring, blah, blah, blah. It's not from the head. It's not a bookkeeper's program. It's not one push it and um, okay, that's it. No, it, you have to hear it. You have to uh, keep in mind the flow. And, and what day it is, and is it Monday morning, is it Friday afternoon, what kind of weather is it, what are the, the items, the bits in the show, and what, what, what presenter, what, what DJ, you know, it's, it's, it's a flow, it's, it's, a, it's not, uh, music is emotion, you have to keep in mind that the flow is important, it, music is emotion, it's yeah. emotion. that's music, it's not, it's not a recurring four minute, you know, yeah. But it's the same with everything, you know. Radio stations, they're more. It always uh, it looks like that that it's GRPs, marketing DJs, and it's uh, it's uh, uh, items, and uh, it's not it's not one. Uh, it, how do you how do you say that? Um, it's not a formula. It's not a formula exactly. Uh, Dutch word, op te Yeah. And what, okay, yeah. well, it's... And one plus one is two. Yeah. It's, it's, it's all together. It's a vision. What, what, in the, on Holland, what were and are the most popular uh, radio stations? Yeah. Why is everybody talking about Radio Veronica in, back in the days that were, they were on a ship on the North yeah. Sea? Pirate why station. are... It was a movement. Why, it was a movement. It's, it, it's the vision. It's yeah. the emotion. Why don't people get that everything is emotion, connection? That's yeah. the future radio. You want to be a part of that club. You want exactly, and and if you want to hear music, you know you can listen to Spotify, iTunes, whatever. Yeah. Why do people still want to listen to the radio? Yeah. It's because 
the content and not content in or oh, I have to have great comedy. You want to have a great person. I want I want to hear something, someone who I can relate to, who is authentic. Yeah. That's what we want to hear. And I could sing a song, and then Sting comes and sing the same songs, and uh, and and I, I wouldn't you know yeah. be able to 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 get the emotion through. But he will. Yeah. You know, it's about emotion. What really gets to us? What 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 makes us feel something? Why do we look? Why are we crying with the Notebook the movie? Or yeah. why do we get you know? Um, uh, why we cry with some songs? Why do we feel when we are hurt? We and we, uh, you know, we are heartbroken, and every song on the radio appears to be put there and uh, uh, would uh, apply to me. That yeah. oh, now now I hear <laughs> all the songs are about me, yeah. are about me. That is how it works. Why yeah. can't people see it? Okay, I, but how how do we put the heart into the radio? That, uh, that's, I, I think, what is the main question. How can station managers, program managers from all over the world bring heart to their station so it gets alive? It gets, uh, it, uh, some uh, coaches talk about stationality instead of personality, they talk about stationality. They want to bring that heart into a formula. But it's, it, isn't it, start, it starts with the love of the people who work there, I guess. That's stationality too. I mean, you know, the, 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 the atmosphere and uh, the, the end product as in how yeah. it sounds on the radio that begins with the program director the program manager yeah. it, it, it it comes it goes top down yeah the one uh, the people on top they set the atmosphere they set the boundaries they uh, they are responsible for the people for uh, the end product i mean the way uh, people interact with each other within a company uh, is set by uh, the one on uh, who is uh, at the top yeah. of the pyramid if he if people um, are uh, insecure and people are, um, uh, um, are more in that business for the status or for the money or the company car or you know for the business card or look I'm a program director I'm a CEO <laughs> if that's your goal that means that you um, uh, uh, could be that you're very insecure and someone who is so insecure and gets a position where he is responsible for hiring and firing people that means that he is never or she uh, never to going to hire someone who is less insecure and has more skills because that would mean that that person would be a threat. Uh, a threat. Yeah, to that. If you yeah. are, we talked about this earlier, I mean, the way that companies, and it's not about radio stations only, it's about, you know, companies in general, is that if you have a company where a lot of A's are working, that and A's I mean that people who have skills, who have passion, who are self-confident, they want to be there, they know what they're doing, and they're, they're critical about themselves, and, and they really want to be a part of uh, that company because they make great products, they contribute to the welfare, the well-being of people. Yeah. And, um, they're, and then all of a sudden, you have more A's, you have some B's, and B's are people who are less self-confident and somewhat more uh, insecure. What happens if if a B is in a position that he can hire a, 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 a new, people. A, new people? It's more likely that he will hire a B or a C because if he would like hire an A, that would means that it became he would uh, uh, he would, um, it would the risk would, yeah no the risk would be for him that. Um, uh, th his inadequacy would be visible and he would feel his insecurity more. So he, ha he is confronted by someone who is an A and that will make him feel like a B even more. And, and make him, so yeah. when you get more Bs and Cs, the As would leave because yeah. if there is a, a lot of a portion of when, when the number of B's and C's grows, yeah. the A's 
people with self-confidence and they have ambition yeah. and they have a, a healthy sense of being yeah. uh, of a, a healthy ego they will leave yeah, but they become an outcast also because they get exactly by the person yeah. yeah because A's, A's uh, are the people who really uh, want to contribute and really want to work together and it, it, it is impossible because people who are insecure, I'm not trying to offend or, or put people down mm. or say that's a bad thing. It's not bad. But people who are insecure have the tendency to point at other people and blame everything else or anyone else uh, uh, because they don't want to uh, want the feeling that they are not adequate. They don't want to feel that insecurity. Yeah. Yeah. So the A's will leave. And in their place, more B's and C's. If if that you know, if 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 that um, goes on, if that goes on, you get an insecure company, and that reflects on the way people interact with each other. Yeah. And eventually, you hear that or you see that in the product. If yeah. it doesn't matter if that's radio or another product, you feel you hear that. Yeah. And that's what happening uh, to a lot of companies and see that. Yeah, so that's that's sad. Um, you said from uh, from the top down, but um, I can imagine also that it's also important that, for example, the 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 woman at the or the girl at the reception, um, uh, uh, the guests who come, that they will uh, be very um, open and enthusiastic to them. That reflects also the end product on the radio. Everyone in the cantina, yeah. in the uh, on the in the elevator. So it's a product we make together. It's not only the one exactly, but that's what I mean. I, it's not that I mean only the the on air tennis. Let me talk about yeah. radio stations. It's not about only the on air tennis. It's what you what you what you uh, put out. You 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 attract. And uh, if you, um, uh, it's about everyone. It's about uh, the receptionist. It's about the people who work uh, like fa facility management. Yeah, it's it's the people market. It's yeah. Exactly, but it has to. But from uh, that goes from the top down. Yeah. yeah, it has to be directed in a good way. You talk about insecurity a lot. Uh, here I come again with Dan O'Day, but he once said that first moment that you opened up the mic on a, on, a, on a radio station, you were very vulnerable, insecure. He says you part that. You still have that inside you somewhere. Um, could you say, have you ever met a, a, a radio jock who is not from time to time insecure about what he's doing on the air and feeling very vulnerable about speaking on that mic and not seeing the people he talks to? Of course, but don't we, don't we have that? We all have that. I mean, some days, it doesn't matter if you're a DJ or not, there are days that you rather you know put down the blood put on down the blinds and stay in bed all day yeah. or you know uh, don't want to interact with other people uh, that's only human yeah. i think that makes us human that's what we and that's what i tell djs also you know if they uh, sometimes you feel it sometimes you feel like oh i want to interact and sometimes y you feel like you know uh, yeah. hiding in a cave so but let's say you have to make a radio show that day and you feel inside like hiding in a cave but you still have to be spontaneous you have that big prize giveaway that evening or that afternoon what to do yeah you know what happens and i think you can relate to this what what you see happening then is oh, i feel shitty it's monday morning and i uh, i don't feel and I'm, I'm i'm constantly you know tripping over my own words and what uh, DJs tend to do is set the bar even higher, <laughs> yeah. you know, uh, because uh, you know the bar is always there, yeah. and now y you know that you're never gonna get there yeah. that day, but you try, you try, and then things uh, go really bad because you're not gonna, uh, you're not gonna reach it by far. Yeah. So you get, you force yourself to be better and better and you get more frustrated and <laughs> yeah. then mistakes start to happen. So what I, what I say is, uh, you know, try to see the, the, the human side of it, that everyone has a day that you're, uh, you know, you want to say good morning and your jaw say, good, you know, it's, <laughs> it happens to everyone. If you, if you can, um, if you can let that just be like it is or, 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 or 
or make a joke about it or, or you know, um, talk about it on the radio. I have great examples of a guy who did that. And then people recognize yeah. that, oh yeah, I have that too, you know, and if you want to say good morning, you say, you know, your jaws <laughs> have a complete mind of their own. And then you, it, when it's out in the open, when it, uh, I would say when it's seen the light, you know, when it's not ro- uh, stuck in your head, yeah. then it's out. It's, you know, you, you accept that it is like, like it is, and it's easier said than done. But if you make it a bit on the radio, and this guy I'm talking about, he did that. He made a great radio bit, and yeah. then the rest was fantastic. You know, sometimes you, you know, keep it keep it short and simple. Yeah. You know, it let, is let what the, it is. Let the music do its work. That's yeah. What, yeah. When when you're not, it, and you know, listeners forgive you for that. They know you cannot peak every day at at one hundred and ten percent. They don't listen like that. No. People don't listen like that. You know, it's funny that in in, the, in the, some days when I do uh, inter- when I interact with people when I see mm-hmm. people I don't feel that great and I have a, 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 a idea that I'm not really as uh, you know involved uh, uh, as I usually am and I'm really trying and I, I, I am but I'm not responsive as I normally am people afterwards so I, and I asked that and they said well I didn't notice it I didn't notice it because my intentions, I want to be there and I'm listening and I'm really uh, uh, trying to connect. But sometimes I don't have that much to say or I'm, I'm talking less than I, uh, uh, I, 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 I normally would. Yeah. But it's all about intentions and, and, and we perceive ourselves and as totally different as other people do. Yeah. And we, um, we I tend to be very hard on ourselves. So, you know, be very critical about what we do and what we say. And we think, oh, I've totally blown now this show and <laughs> it must be the worst. And oh God, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be fired. And then a couple of, a couple of weeks later, you, 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 you know, you listen to that show again. And oh, that wasn't that bad. Yeah. It wasn't that bad. I thought it was worse. Yeah. But, but you are, you know, even, if you are a DJ, probably you on your worst day, you are still worthwhile listening to. Yeah. But you make yourself harder to try to, you know, reach that level you want to reach, but you yeah. know you are not capable of reaching. And well, that makes things worse. So, you know, if you want to do yourself a favor, stop trying. Yeah. I once got a compliment from a producer who said, the best shows I heard you do were the shows where I thought you didn't care about what were you, what you, yeah. you know, how you sounded like, if you, and that's it. Huh? We sometimes force too much. We think we have to do our freaking best, and then things get forced and not natural. And when you sound laid back and just trying some stuff, then things start to work. Yeah, if you don't try too hard, you know, yeah. if if you have or oh, every break counts, or oh, I have to write it out and then and then you know yeah. you know read it out and or practice and then it becomes not authentic anymore. But that's what pro- some program wrong program managers tell us: uh, make every break count, and uh, you know commercial time is valuable. We could have played a song on those three minutes you did that stupid bit. That's what some we sometimes get to. Hear. But they're not wrong. I mean, they're not saying that you, uh, uh, then I hear what, what, what they mean is right. I mean, what yeah. they say is right. Yeah, but they're, it, not, they're, they're not judgmental about, about you as a person. It means, uh, you're funny that you think, well, I, I, did, uh, I can't be myself, but probably if you have that three minute or, 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 or airtime, uh, and the way you make the best of it is be yourself. It's not saying, it's not saying that you, are not good enough, it can motivate you to try, okay, but who am I and what what do I have to say? What do I want to say? Yeah. But we feel it as criticism and, oh, now I have to be really careful in what I'm doing. Yeah. So you get even more something that it's not really you, yeah. but it's so careful, uh, uh, th- then it's so, so f- uh, uh, contrived as in, uh, try to not make mistakes and, yeah. and, and then you don't have anything that appeals to no one. Yeah, yeah, we talked about this before. We have a couple of more minutes left. I want to uh, 
let the audience or someone who is watching, who is a, a radio DJ who wants to get better, um, to get in touch with you. Is it a possibility that people send you air checks or um, maybe via Skype that they do a, a coaching session with you? You talk good English, so are you open to that? Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah of course. I'm very curious about what people have to say. I have to say that uh, I don't want to put it off as I'm, I'm, I'm pretty busy, but I would love it to have air checks or questions and I always answer. Uh, but it could be just if, if you don't have a reply within the hour <laughs> yeah. or in day, but I always yeah. read the mail. I listen to things yeah. and I'm very curious about what people think uh, 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 about this interview about uh, or, or the, the, the experience of yeah. people or new concepts. I'm always curious about how they uh, now how, how, how they relate to this or maybe have some new insights or just Please do. I yeah. mean, uh, go to my website www.ervinpeters.nl. We're going to put this uh, on the side, uh, underneath the interview. Um, thanks again for this nice uh, talk. For the, our Dutch audience, there's also a uh, talk in Dutch we did uh, uh, some time ago. It's also can be found on YouTube and on your website. There's um, yeah, some interesting stuff also. Yeah, and it's funny if you listen to that, uh, maybe we should put subtitles in there, but uh, it's funny because the things we just, we dis didn't discuss that much radio things, Yeah. but in essence, it's, it's it has the same ground values as what we discussed here. Yeah. It's all it's all about the same. It's about being human and, to, and, and, and be yourself. And then you are the most interesting you can get. Yeah. Thanks again, Aaron. You're welcome. Good luck as, with your work as a DJ and radio coach. Thank you very much.